Looks like we have about uh, four people here now. I'm going to give a couple more minutes for everyone to join and we can get started with the questions. But if you have a question now, just use the, uh, the chat on the right side of the screen and uh, you can add your questions in there. There we go. One thing I'll be doing differently this time is I'll add the chat here so everybody can see the questions rather than uh, what I did last time and just kind of went through everything. So this should work out a little bit better. So I hope everybody had a uh, enjoyable Fourth of July over the past uh, weekend. I know I certainly did. You can see I'm pretty sunburnt from being outside in the sun the entire weekend. So I hope everyone in the United States you had an enjoyable time. And uh, now it's time to get back at it, especially you know if you're an Amazon seller and in preparation for the Prime days that are up ahead. Uh, that's two big days that are really on my mind. So that could be a conversation we can have today if we want a topic we want to discuss. Uh, but I'll address our first question that we had someone submit ahead of time and then we'll go to the live chat just add your questions in there and i'll go uh, through them in order from the first come first serve so we had a, a question come in this is actually from the previous live stream that i uh, unfortunately had to cancel and this is the one that we're making up for it but uh steph r she had some comments here appreciate the comments uh, i'm not sure if steph's with, steph is with us right now but uh, she says what products do you recommend selling for this up and coming christmas so I'm glad that one, one, the first thing, Steph, you're already thinking ahead. That's great. Um, as an Amazon seller, you should always be thinking about months to come rather than uh, you know data that you're looking at currently and what your, the signs and trends that you're seeing. So for Christmas and the overall holiday season between November and the end of December, um, I typically focus on toys and games, sports and outdoors, and um, electronics or camera and camera and equipment categories. Those three categories on Amazon tend to perform the best. Um, as far as the amount of demand that we see of an increase month over month. During that holiday period, people are really focused on buying those type of items. As far as you know, what specifically to sell within those niches and within those categories, I'm not 100% sure and I probably, honest, I honestly won't know probably until August or early September at the earliest. Um, especially with toys and games, things tend to change very quickly and what could be the new hot toy item or the, the new fad item that could be coming out it may not have honestly come out yet, and it could come, be coming out in August or September or maybe a month or so before this holiday holiday season. So, Steph, thank you for the question there. Go back to the live chat here. See, we do not have any questions just quite yet. So, someone feel free to add your question in there. We can uh, have a good conversation on it. Unless it's just my end, let me check the. Nope. <laughs> well, I know we have 17 people here. Someone has to have a question. If not, you're just going to hear me discuss what I'm about to be doing for uh, Prime Days that are up ahead coming on July 12th and 13th. It's not that interesting. There we go, Roberto. How's it going, man? Kevin, thanks for joining us from Florida. Glad we're getting some conversation going now. So what's on everybody's mind? Is everyone, uh, do you have products that you're selling? You have questions on how to list those products? Do you have questions on product research? Really anything, this is a, a an open forum where you can just ask anything about Amazon, selling on Amazon, side hustles, financial freedom, anything in general. Thanks Rob, Roberto, SM, thanks all for joining us. Mubin, hello from Pakistan. Awesome. <clears throat> so we'll say one thing um, for Prime Days coming up. There are two Prime Days on July 12th and 13th. Uh, probably the most effective thing to do during Prime Days is to add a coupon. It has to be 5% at a minimum. Um, you can go the whole way up to, I think, 90%, which I think is just too much at that point. But I recommend at least adding a 5% coupon 
That way you can make yourself eligible for those Prime Day discounts. Uh, it really will help you increase your demand and your overall sales volume during those two days. So that, if, if you're not doing anything, if you don't have a coupon, uh, make sure you go ahead and add one for your existing listings. 5% honestly does not do a whole lot to your profit margin, but uh, getting yourself in the category to have those discounts on Prime Day is really going to help you out and to gain exposure. So that's that'd be my piece of advice uh, for Prime Days. That's exactly what I'm doing is I'm focusing on coupons uh, for my advertising strategy. And just so you know, there's two different um, Amazon accounts. There's the individual and professional selling account types. Um, you cannot use coupons if you have the individual account type. So you may want to think about upgrading just for the month to the professional membership so you can gain access to those coupons. Bonjour from Paris. It's a familiar Patreon right there. There we go. Thank you for the question. So what ROI do you go for on your products? Uh, so what I typically focus on is the profit margin for products. Uh, typically between a 35 to 50% profit margin is realistic for a private label product. Of course, you can exceed those numbers and of course you can be below those. But for me personally, that's what I focus on. Um, that typically uh, is what, what comes out to be for an ROI, typically 100 to 300%. I'm looking to double my money, if not triple my money. At the end of the day, with all the Amazon fees, all of my cost of goods sold included in that. Uh, that's really just what I focus on, but I prefer to focus on the profit margin and typically my ROI is, um, it's what I make it with my advertising campaigns. So thanks for that question. That gets us started here. See another one here. Hi, can you recommend a low cost value item to sell on Amazon, which is also small enough to also package or fulfill by Amazon? So this is a ace. This is a very common question, and for my product research service, everyone typically asks for a very small product so they can minimize their shipping cost, especially right now with inflation being what it is, um, any carrier cost. So to recommend one product, um, there's one that I came across today. It's called the niche is called Mommy Long Legs. It's this toy uh, stuffed animal. Um, I'm, I, I didn't do a whole lot of research on it, um, but I know that it's probably branded already, so just be careful selling an identical product. But Mommy Long Legs was a, a very popular product that is small, lightweight, um, and, and cheap, relatively inexpensive, um, that you can begin selling. Thanks for that question. As Tally, at what point do you suggest one start using PPC for a listing? Uh, for those of you who are beginners, PPC is pay per click advertising. It's Amazon's uh, own advertising platform that they have in network. Uh, it allows you to advertise and sponsor your listing uh, whenever someone searches for something on Amazon. <clears throat> so this question, um, I would recommend when you launch a product, definitely have some form of advertising and a marketing campaign. Now it doesn't have to be a PPC campaign, but I would recommend doing something on social media to gain exposure to your listing. Uh, when you have your listing, you initially create it, you have zero reviews and your uh, search ranking is gonna be very, very, very low. So there's very, a very slim chance that someone's just going to stumble upon your listing, unless you're in a niche that has extremely low competition. So my recommend, right, my, to say it simply, my recommendation there is to go ahead and do it at the start. As soon as you list your product and you have available inventory to sell, go ahead and create that advertising campaign, um, and that way you can ensure to gain those initial reviews. All right, thank you for that question. Rob has a, a question here. What's the best software uh, do you use, like Keeps or Scoutify, to source products? So those, um, you know, those two programs there that Rob mentioned, those are great, especially if you're in online arbitrage or, or retail arbitrage. But for me personally, I've only focused on private labeling products. So I use a lot of, um, I obtain a lot of information from Jungle Scout and Helium 10. Those are the two software programs that I use, and I use that software to source data to determine. You know, what's in demand, demand, what's going to be in demand in the future in the coming months, um, and also what has low competition based on all that information and the trends that are review. So I, I do not use those two individually, but for private labeling and even wholesaling, I'd recommend using Helium 10 or um, Jungle Scout. All right, we'll get to Julia's question here next. In the meantime, I'm going to see if I can get this chat working so you can see it better. Again, I was having technical difficulties last time, but I was able to work through it. There we go. So I think this would be easier for everyone to see. Okay, perfect. 
So Julia said, hi Josh, is someone helping you with your YouTube channel or Patreon or do you do everything yourself? I do everything myself. So Julia, hi, I know we talk on a, um, you know, we, we've talked plenty of times before on Patreon and, and through Fiverr and everything. Um, I, I, I do everything myself. I don't outsource anything. So everything from the content creation process for my YouTube channel to editing the videos, I do all that myself. So I, I, am, in, I am limited with my time um, and I haven't thought about bringing on someone else yet, but as the channel grows and as my Amazon business grows and Patreon and all those other services that I provide, I may have to start thinking about that. But for now, I enjoy doing what, I, what I'm able to do with um, giving my one-on-one -on -one attention, especially for the Patreon group. You're welcome, Rob. And Julia has another, qu another question. When I was creating a shipping plan, Amazon asked me if I wanted to be the first seller to sell my product in Canada. If I would agree, does it mean I have to create a new shipping, pl shipping plan to Canada? Okay. So I'm not entirely sure of that question, Julia. Um, maybe something we, we have to discuss in our Patreon group. I'm, I, I haven't come across, because I mainly sell in the United States, Canada, and UK markets, I haven't come across a point where I'm the absolutely first type of product that is going to be listed um, in that nation's marketplace. So let's discuss that more um, outside of this forum. And, um, I can always post something to the community post later on. All right, another question. Thanks for your time. You're welcome, very welcome. My question is that as a new beginner, I'm struggling to find a product. Any tips, thanks. Yes, that's um, one, one big mistake that I made when I first got started on Amazon is I sold, I'm sure you've heard this from me, as I sold things that I wanted to sell and I thought that would be in demand. I did not spend any time to actually go ahead and try to find uh, data to support what products to begin selling. So I highly recommend um, educating yourself through YouTube videos or Amazon Seller University, how to actually perform product research, um, some useful tools. A free tool is Google Trends you can use. It's not the best because it's for Google searches, not necessarily Amazon. Uh, but for Amazon specific, I'd use Helium 10 or Jungle Scout. Those are two great softwares that you can edu educate yourself on how to use them and to eventually find that product you're looking for. Uh, but I, I would recommend if you're looking for categories in general, uh, think about starting out in, um, in sports and outdoors and home and kitchen. Those are typically two easy ungated categories that you can begin selling in. There's not a whole lot of hassle. Okay, another question. Do you do seasonal products for your private label too or just evergreen? So just for my private label part of my business, um, everything's long-term. So I, I go into it with a long-term vision, at least one year that I, I plan to sell those products. Um, and typically they end up selling for three to five years uh, because that's really how long I've been selling. Uh, for products that are seasonal, I will sell those and I will sell those with a GTIN exemption and I will not go through the private label and branding process. Uh, that is what I've noticed. These seasonal products, you can, you know, customers are not uh, too focused on actually uh, Going, going, looking for a brand in those products. They're more focused on just what the product is, like a U.S. flag here for Independence Day. They don't really care what brand that is. So for my recommendation is if you're going to do seasonal products, don't worry about private labeling unless you plan to sell that for multiple seasons uh, for years to come. All right, Roberto, I wanted to sell a baby product on Amazon. I'm sure before I read this second part, I'm sure you run into some issues because that is a, a difficult niche and difficult category to begin selling in. So Roberto says, now I see someone else went ahead and launched the product on Amazon already. Do I have to ask the seller permission to sell the same product? So if you, if according to Amazon's policy, if there's an existing product um, that is already on, on Amazon with an existing listing, you should go ahead and list your product on that existing listing. However, it gets kind of um, difficult to say whenever you have a product that is nearly identical to the one that you want to sell and it's a different brand. As soon as somebody brands their product, it becomes an entirely separate product, and you cannot go ahead and uh, sell an identical product on that brand unless you have their approval. I know it's somewhat somewhat complicated, but Roberto, the question to ask yourself is, um, is that listing that's already on there, is it branded? If it is, you're gonna have to either create a new listing with your own brand, or you're gonna have to ask that seller for permission to list on their listing. Uh, chances are, they're not gonna allow you to, to join their listing and to sell with them. Okay, and Ace, another question here. What is the easiest way to get accepted for branding on Amazon on a private label item? For example, slapping branded sticker on an item wouldn't really work. Can you recommend any other methods? Yes, uh, so I, I know I shouldn't be saying this, but I have placed a transparent sticker 
on some of my products and I've gotten through the Amazon brand registry process. That isn't what you should do, but um, if the image is right and you submit that to Amazon, typically they'll end up approving you. Uh, what you should do, and according to Amazon's policies, is that they, they say verbatim that you need to affix your brand to the product and the product packaging. So you need to go ahead and you have to find a way to actually embed your brand on that product. Um, if it's a plastic product, you can actually um, use thermal to go ahead and, and place your brand on that actual product. Uh, there's plenty of ways to actually go about that, but you need to make sure that's permanently affixed. It's not a tag. It's not a sticker. Uh, that's really the, the main focus on that. Uh, so that, that's the easiest way. Uh, I do have some tutorials on how to actually go ahead and to um, go through the brand registry process as well as the U.S. trademark process, which is something you have to do for that. So go ahead. I, I can put those in the comments here after this video so you can check those out. All right, Rob, uh, is it possible to drop ship on Amazon? If so, what suppliers to best to use like Alibaba? It is possible from what I hear. I've never personally drop shipped. I've only focused on private labeling and wholesaling. Uh, so I, you know, I can't comment on that too much, Rob, unfortunately. Um, but I know that it is possible. But I, I think if you really want to do that, I'd go ahead and do that on eBay or use Shopify to create a website. I think that's much more effective. Deadpan, what is something I can do with $0 to make a bit of money so I can start something else? Man, that, that would be the infinite ROI if you were able to accomplish that with $0. Um, what comes to my mind, uh, which is out of all my businesses, the seven streams of income that I have, the best return on investment that I've ever received was making YouTube videos. Uh, it, it requires $0 if you have the equipment, uh, but anybody, anybody can shoot that with their, um, their cell phone nowadays. So if you have a cell phone, you can make a YouTube video. Uh, but you really need to put a lot of time and energy into thinking about you know, what separates your videos from the rest and what you want to discuss. Uh, that would be the, the best way you can make money with zero dollars. You're welcome, Roberto. Julia, another questions here. It looks like it's impossible to sell anything that is generic. Amazon wants you to brand everything. That, that is correct. That's a, a trend that I've noticed. So back in, I'd say, 20, end of 2019, it was extremely easy to go ahead. Um, you could actually get a third-party barcode from Barcodes Mania, which I used to do. You could put your brand on there for the listing, and Amazon really didn't check to see if that was a legal brand. It was trademarked, uh, but now they are cracking down on those, and they want everyone to be branded. That way, all the suppliers on Alibaba and AliExpress and DHgate, they're not just creating listings and uh, shipping products from overseas, basically uh, just using Amazon as a way to get to the U.S. marketplace. Uh, I don't, I, Julia, I don't think it's impossible to sell anything generically. I would go ahead and say that if you're going to private label products, go ahead and do it long term uh, and make sure you brand it. But if you're going to do to if you really want to sell something generically, sell seasonal and short term products that way. They will sell, but you will need an advertising campaign to really drive those sales. Yep, everyone's welcome. Any more questions? We're uh, we're, still, we're still good on time. Have about seven more minutes, and then I'm just going to close things out with. Uh, just a couple updates here. Yeah, Deadpan, I appreciate you um, putting a question here that's not uh, Amazon related. I'm uh, trying to get a wider and more general audience here going forward with still a, a main focus on Amazon. But um, yeah, that's, that's a good question, even though it's a very difficult question to answer. Rick has a question, um, thoughts on selling in different countries. Uh, I, I really like this question. This is something that I uh, honestly, earlier this year, I started thinking about and started to expand my business. Uh, I think it's a great idea if you have an um, established uh, set of product lines and you actually have some brands. I wouldn't say that you know if you're a beginner seller and you're just looking to sell in multiple marketplaces, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Go with the U.S. marketplace if you're based in the U.S., uh, you start to grow your product, and if you gain a lot of traction, then think about expanding into different marketplaces, such as the Mexican marketplace, Canadian, and um, in the United Kingdom. Those are three great up-and-coming marketplaces that there's going to be a lot of growth over the next decade or so. Ace, do you have any other side hustles apart from Amazon? Uh, currently, at the moment, I mean, I would just, I would just say YouTube is the uh, the main side hustle. Um, it's kind of interesting now because I used to work a full-time job back in until the end of last year in 2021, uh, and those were side hustles during that time. But now I'm full-time working on my business, so nothing's really a side hustle anymore, but they are you know, side hustles that you could start. I used to um, 
uh, I used to rent out a, a vehicle on Turo, a Polaris Slingshot. That was one of my side hustles back from 2019 to 2021. Um, I do have real estate that I currently manage, but you know, it's a very passive, um, very passive side hustle at this current moment with what my portfolio that I have. So I would say, other than Amazon, that's really what I focus on, and YouTube. Those are my two main ones, and then some services on the side that relate to that. Okay, do I need a Dunn's number, D-U-N-S number for small business badge on Amazon? Um, you know, I'm, I'm going to be honest, I'm not too familiar with this. Uh, is this a, a U.S.-based uh, business badge, or is this something for that, that's international? I can actually go ahead and look this up since we have some time. Get a universal numbering system. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure, um, or the, the small business badge that you're referring to, but if you could elaborate on that, I can try to give a better response. Um, if not, sorry, I can't answer that one completely. All right, what else we have? I know somebody else has some some other questions. I think we have a good uh, amount here so far, but for another five or so minutes, I plan to, to answer these questions and we can wrap it up here. So I imagine everyone that's here on the, the live stream right now, and imagine that you're a beginner Amazon seller and you're really stuck between either you're still looking for products or you've ordered products and you're waiting to list that first product. Uh, so those are that's usually a good segment to ask questions is any, any part of that process. Okay, deadpan. Do you do anything, any stuff like writing down goals or journaling or meditation, stuff like that? Of course. Yeah, this is um, you know, something I've actually I practice a lot of. I, I'm not sure if you can see behind me because I know the, the image is fairly small, but be, behind me I have a uh, cool, warm, hot, and some planning board. I really all my tasks, when, Monday morning when I get up, I go ahead and I put all of my tasks um, all the goals that I want to accomplish that week on there, and I track everything uh, day by day. And on the right side there, I guess it would be the left side if it's inverted, uh, I put down all the, the stuff that I want to accomplish um, in the week ahead. So I'm always planning for the future. That's one thing I do. I, I try to meditate, but for someone like me, it's very difficult because my mind's always getting lost in thought. Uh, but I, I know a lot of people who do meditate, and they provide a lot of, it provides them a lot of insight and self-awareness, which is great. But, and same thing with journaling. Those are great. All right, Julia, is it really important to get GS1 barcode if Amazon gives you their own barcodes? Uh, I would say so if you're going to private label. Uh, if Amazon's going to give you their own barcodes, I, I think what you're referring to there is the FN SKU labels. Uh, you still need a GS1 barcode to create a new listing. That is your product ID. And once you create that, an ASIN, ASIN is created, which is your listing and uh, your unique identifier to your listing. And after that point, you can obtain the FN SKU labels or Fulfillment Network Stock Keeping Unit uh, labels. And all that is, it's just a barcode that goes on the back over top of your product ID, which is your GS1 barcode. And um, Amazon just really uses that themselves to track everything within their Fulfillment Network. All right, Rose, I've been doing uh, retail arbitrage for about a year and I've been stuck in the same rate, not much growth. Any recommendations for scaling upwards? Yeah, this is um, a really good question. I enjoy you putting this question question in here. I have a lot of mixed feelings about retail arbitrage and online arbitrage because you are really, um, you know, it, you're constrained by the time for you to actually go out and find these products and actually purchase them or order them online, and then you have to package them and send them to Amazon if you're using FBA services. So you are constrained a lot by your time, and if you're constrained by your time, it's going to limit your growth, which is what you're seeing right here. My recommendation uh, for scaling for an RA or OA business is you have to really start bringing on more people in your business to um, you know, really outsourcing those products and someone to actually run and get those products for you or someone to be on the back end looking for products online to sell um, or even you know, a, a person or two to actually go ahead and to package everything on your behalf and get that to Amazon. I do not personally enjoy RA or OA. I just think it's very time consuming and I'm very big on limiting my time and maximizing my ROI, uh, which it doesn't really agree with. So I would private label or wholesale if I were you. All right, Asa, if selling on Amazon for the Christmas season, when is the best month to put up a new listing if selling a seasonal item? 
I would do it now if you can. Uh, you know, it doesn't mean you have to go ahead and buy 500 units or really go overboard. You could even start out with 50 units and get your listing up there. Uh, no one's really gonna buy anything at this moment. I do understand that, but it allows you to establish yourself. You can go ahead and have some family members order your products for you to give you those first maybe five reviews and really to get you going. Uh, I would say really start cranking up things near the end of October before Thanksgiving. That's when we really start to see trends picking up and demand increasing for those seasonal items. It's a good idea to start FBM instead of FBA as a beginner. If you're in the um, continental United States and you're just getting started and you do not mind actually packaging all these products and fulfilling them yourself, yes, go ahead and do FBM. It's gonna save you, mon uh, save you money. Uh, but with that being said, if time is a constraint of yours and you're working a full-time job and you have to go ahead and package all these products for all these customers, uh, then you know it's, it, it doesn't seem like it's worth it in my mind. I love FBA. I, I've done FBM a very small bit in the beginning, uh, but I think FBA is just great for the time value that it gives you. And it's relatively inexpensive for what they're doing. All right, this is going to be the last question, Roberto, and uh, then we're just going to move on to one other topic and we'll wrap up. So Roberto says, do you use Jungle Scout to sell wholesale? I find it a bit hard to find good products that Amazon already doesn't sell. Is there a way to filter to get products um, that Amazon is not selling? So I, I haven't wholesaled in a couple months now. I'm still just focused on growing my existing private label, and pro private label products. Uh, but you can use Jungle Scout to see what trends, what product niches are trending upward, which have low competition. And then you can find existing listings um, to sell on. I mean, that's basically down to the down to its core, the, the, the process that you're gonna be looking at there. As far as filtering down items um, that Amazon is not selling, uh, not that I'm aware of for Jungle Scout, I'm not entirely sure for Helium 10, but there is a check mark on Jungle Scout in the filters where you can exclude uh, Amazon's top brands. So brands like Nike and Apple and Adidas, and I'm pretty sure that Amazon actually um, falls in that category. Uh, but you really don't know until you, you look into that category on Amazon and you look for the AMZ logo. Uh, that suggests that Amazon is selling that product themselves. And just to wrap up with that, do not compete against Amazon. You're going to lose um, 10 times out of 10. It's just not worth it. Okay. All right. So that really wraps us up for the chat here. I just want to cover some new items here. Um, every month, I like to just you know give you some more information and awareness on some services that I provide. It is a shameless plug, but I think I can really help out others because that's really why you know I'm doing this now is to provide my knowledge to others in a way that's fair. Uh, I just created this earlier this week and I just received my first order. Um, I'm actually going ahead now and I'm gonna create Amazon FBA listings for you as a customer. So you'll go ahead, if you wanna participate in the service, you can go ahead, you can send me a couple images, raw images of your, your products, um, or you can even send it to me. And then I'll go ahead and I'll create your product description, I'll create your, your six images, your bullet points, your title enhanced with the top keywords. I'll give you a full list of maybe 500 or so keywords you probably only end up using 25 to 50 of those. I'll look into your competition. I'll go through all of this information for you personally, um, and then I'll report that out to you. So you can go ahead, you can take what I give you, you can create your listing, and you can start from day one uh, having an optimized and professional looking listing. So that's one thing there. And then the last thing I want to discuss, and then I'll open up for some more questions on this, um, is our Patreon mentorship group. We still have, for the month of July, we have four spots for our product research subscription. This gives you a product research pa pro excuse me, a product research packet that I've delivered myself um, and, the, the, and I've analyzed and compiled into a report and just gives a product idea with all the information and data to support it, along with the supplier and exactly how much to order. It's really your, your all-in-one package for you to go ahead and to begin selling with a, you know, a successful product. And then lastly, we have three spots remaining for this month for the mentorship program. You get everything in uh, these two tiers here, plus you'll get access to my videos early on and ad free. And uh, the most important one is you'll get private one-on-one -on -one chat with me throughout the whole, whole entire month. So I'm there at your disposal to ask any question like this. I'm there to personally help you. You know, If you have an ad campaign, I can help you optimize it. If you have a listing, I can help you um, improve it based on what you have. So go ahead and you can check those out. I have those links in the description. Um, and I can open it up here the last minute just for any questions on those two services. All right. Well, I don't think we're going to have any questions on that. Uh, 
I do have my email in the uh, community tab. If you go to my channel on YouTube, you can send me an email if you have any more questions. I would love to help you and uh, take a look at those services. I'd love to help you out in, in those ways to really accelerate your Amazon FBA success. I'll catch you guys all in the, uh, the next live stream that we have here in about a month, and I'll be sending that out here in probably three weeks. Everyone stay safe.